I've stayed in hundreds of hotels, hundreds. I've never seen porn on TV. I was in a hotel room and there was inappropriate stuff on the TV and I lingered longer than I should have. And um, I turned it off, I went to bed and I felt immense shame, immense shame. But what I knew is I was staying in that hotel room the next night and I knew that if I did not say this out loud to somebody, yeah. I would hope that I wouldn't. I feel like, I, feel, I don't feel like I need to clarify, but the last time I saw porn was before I was a Christian. Like, it's just yeah. like, but yeah. there it was. And Satan knows that yeah, that's how he know. can come for me. I think for me, character building moments, usually for me are what happens in the secret. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like what happens in the private. And I have a million things I could list out of like, mm -hmm. I failed and I gratified my flesh when no one was looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I also have some moments where I'm like, man, I do trust. I was walking by the Spirit and God, you convicted me of something and I said no. I remember just recently in the past year, I had already watched season one of this one show and I remember during season one feeling like, I don't know that I should yeah. be watching this. I am, I'm not here to tell anyone what they should and shouldn't yeah. watch, but I know the things yeah. I shouldn't watch. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I think everybody right. has, mm -hmm. you need to so figure that true. out for yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I know the things that I shouldn't watch yeah. and um, sexual things are not a good thing for me to be watching. Yeah. And so I watched season one and I got that little stomach little thing. Little holy yeah. tingle is what yeah, I Yeah, like but you know, it. the storyline was so good and I stayed with it and I pushed through it and I fast forward and I watched it. Well, season two comes out and I like was sick or something. I'm like, perfect. I'm gonna watch season two. I can't wait. Everyone's talking about it online. Let's go. Yeah. I lay down on the couch and I started within the first scene. I mean, there's already been like a naked man and, and conversations mm. about infidelity. Two things. Guess what? I don't need in my life mm. a naked man that's not my husband <laughs> uh -huh. right. and conversations about my greatest fear, which is infidelity. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there and I think to myself, I don't think you should be watching this. Mm. And so I turned it off and I don't share that story to be like, look how awesome I am because I already told you, I failed yeah. season one. But it was in there that I was like, I think that's God building something within me yeah. because yes. I yeah. want to desire to walk by the spirit so that yeah. you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Yeah. Yeah. And my flesh, you know what my flesh wants? My flesh wants yeah. to watch season two. Sure. The spirit is saying, this is not the best yes. that I have for you. This yes. is not what I have mm. for you. And like I said, don't put me on a holier than thou no. plate or platform. Yeah. But those are when I see like God building character in yeah. me, when I can say, I heard the spirit, yeah. I listened to the spirit, yeah. I am closer, I look more like Jesus than I yeah. did three hours before that. Yeah. And yeah. that's where I think character for, mm -hmm. for me that I can look back yeah. and be like, thank you God, because you're building something in me that couldn't have been built yeah. otherwise. I love that because that's so real life. Yeah. Like I think every yeah. single person watching this can think of something yeah. in their yeah. life right now. Cause I yeah. think, Character and integrity is also built in these little tiny decisions. Yeah. Like, um, I, I don't think anybody sets out thinking, I want to have an affair. Right. Yeah. But I think the one text message you send the guy yeah. or the DM or the, it's mm. all these little tiny steps that all of a sudden you're so off course. Yeah. You end up in a place where you're like, how did I get here? Yeah. But it's being obedient to the spirit in those moments when you're like, ah, like, a just course, yeah. a just course. Oh, yeah. I don't need to walk down that path. Never, I need never. to, and what I loved about your story is like you tasted the sweetness of re repentance yes. in that moment, the mm. kindness of God, mm. that weight lifting off of you, which is available to all of us yeah. when we repent and turn back towards Him. You know where I think we get in trouble and you, you, you kind of nailed it, is the lingering. Yeah. Oh, it's, we love to linger. It's the lingering of watching. It's the lingering in kind of a flirty conversation online yeah. that that is secret that no one would know about, right? It's the lingering. Yeah. It's the lingering of, of not coming clean. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what we have to think about. Yeah. Because, you know, when has the Lord spoken to us and said, here's what I want you to do? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've said, oh, I don't know, maybe not. Mm -hmm. It's the lingering of yeah. those things, the, the things that uh, no one would know about, yeah. um, and yet uh, those things then allowed to fester yeah. are the things that break us down character-wise. Yeah. I'm going to tell a story that I've never shared publicly, but you know the story, yeah. is um, that lingering. And this is why I think we need people. 
in our lives. Yes. We need community because yes. what happens in secret can stay in secret. Oh yeah. A year ago, I was traveling and um, I, we all travel all the time. And um, I was meeting Lisa for dinner the next day. And the night before I have, gosh, I don't know. I can't believe I'm saying this in public. Um, mm. It's gonna set somebody free. Yeah. I've stayed in hundreds of hotels, mm -hmm. hundreds. Mm -hmm. I've never seen porn on TV in a hotel ever. And although that is not, I don't struggle with pornography. I watched pornography before I was a Christian. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I was in a hotel room and there was inappropriate stuff on the TV and I lingered longer than I should have. Mm -hmm. And um, I turned it off, I went to bed and I felt immense shame. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Immense shame. But what I knew is I was staying in that hotel room the next night. And I knew that if I did not say this out loud to somebody, yeah. I would hope that I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I, feel, I don't feel like I need to clarify, but the last time I saw porn was before I was a crit. Like, it's just yeah. like, but yeah. there it was. And Satan knows that yeah. that's how yeah. he can come yes. for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I texted her the next morning. I said, hey, I, or we sat down at dinner. I said, before you do it, I got to tell, I got to say something out loud. And I told Lisa this exact same thing. Good for you. That's great, Jamie. Because I knew, I, I hope to God that I wouldn't have fallen to the same trap again. But if nobody yeah. knew, it'd be really easy yeah. to fall into oh, the trap again. On. You know what you said to me, actually? You said, I want you to ask me about this tomorrow. I did. Mm -hmm. I said, I need you to ask me when you yeah. see me tomorrow. Because we were going to go on a trip together. And I said, yeah. ask me. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And for me, I knew I don't want to be in that trap. Mm -mm. It's an ugly place to be. I haven't been yeah. in that trap for decades, yeah. but I've been in that hole before yeah. and it's stinky and it's gross, but Satan is willing to pull you down in that. Sure. And I feel embarrassed talking about it. Um, Jamie, do you know how yeah. many yeah. women within the Christian community oh, struggle yes. with that? Do you know how important this is for someone to understand that there are leaders that there are spiritual leaders out there that are willing to do something like that that is brave yeah. with yeah. another friend that is vulnerable because there is a lot of skepticism right now in people who stand on a stage, yeah. write books, right. have a podcast. They don't believe that leadership is really, really having integrity and character. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna tell you something. It is really powerful to see someone who says, yes, I went to a friend. Mm -hmm. And this is what we do in hotel rooms. We hold each other yeah. to accountability. Yeah. And it can yeah. be very, very powerful. And I, I just, I'm proud of you. Yes. Thank you too. It's Me massive too. for the women that are listening because so many will resonate with that yeah. story. It's so important to recognize and confront lingering behaviors. I think one of the ways that we recognize when lingering behaviors are sort of out of control and harming us is when they are beginning to disrupt our life. I think certainly when we have people around us that love us, that are, are noticing things, perhaps have called out things when there's multiple people, and I'm talking about safe people, trusted people, people that love us, that are for us, that's very important. One of the ways that we confront it is to tell ourselves the truth about it and to do that immediately because any time that we allow things to go on, to linger, uh, it can be very damaging to us. And so telling ourselves the truth and doing that immediately is crucial in confronting those things that are very damaging to us. All of us up here, we yes, are tempted absolutely. and we can fall yes. at any moment, but what I know after walking with Jesus for 24 years is that if I don't say these things out loud, Satan yeah. is so happy. Oh, of course. Oh, that yeah. is, he course. is like, I have yeah. you right here. I will coddle this. Yep. And yep. you, when you are low, when you are having a hard day, yep. when your husband is mean to you, yes. you come back to yep. this place. Yes. Ooh, and good. so I did. I said, yeah. I need to tell you what happened. I need you to ask yeah. me tomorrow because I knew I was going to be yeah. in that hotel room for one more night. And I've stayed in hundreds of hotel rooms. Yep. Never. Let's speak to that. This is how easy it is. Listen, there are wonderful people who love the Lord every single day of their life. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, is in this world, these things are going to bombard you. Yeah. These yeah. things are going to 
come at you. I mean, Satan is yes. roaring yes. and he is roaming yes. and yes. he wants to tear us apart. This is our foe. Yeah. It is not mm. each other. Yes. It is not right. the TV. Yeah. It is a, It is yeah. Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so we have to be aware of these yes. things and character matters. Mm. Integrity matters. And so this conversation yeah. is huge to say, listen, we're all tempted. Uh, yeah. We're so all tempted good. every yeah. single day of our yeah. lives. We're mm. all tempted to have a fair and to uh, leave our first love, the Lord, and to be yeah. mad at each other and yeah. not, you know, love each yeah. other and dive deeper into self-pity and yeah. self-hate and to yeah. all of these things. We're all tempted, right? Yeah. And so it's very important yeah. that we understand who our real enemy is yeah. here and that character matters. It we got to be women life. of depth. This is real. We all yes. have real battles. Oh, and so uh, this is just yeah. really, really important. And it's not always just the hotel room. It's on these phones. Yeah. It's the scroll, the it's stuff on, we see yeah. that gets yeah. put into our minds and mm. held in that place. I know one of the prayers I pray for myself and for my children especially is that they would be um, become sick with their sin. Mm. Like that it would literally, That's like, That's like so in that good. moment that you yes. had, it's like, I'm sick, not at myself, not ashamed, but just like, I want it to just make me ill. Mm -hmm. So I run back to the healer, mm -hmm. the one that can actually take oh, care of it so for us. But we've got to articulate it when yeah. we are, are off course and oh. when we're sinning, we got to repent. Yeah, this idea of like becoming sick with your with your sin. Um, what I mean is like, I want to ache. I want, I never want to get comfortable with my, my sin. I want it to, um, I want, I want to allow the Holy Spirit to convict me of it, to move me away from it. It's what He does. It's actually His kindness that He does that. But um, I pray that over myself and over my kids because I never want us to get comfortable with it. And so just this idea that um, God never let me settle. Don't let me settle for what's less. I want to settle for holiness and what's good and what you have for me. And so um, I want that to be a wrestle. And so I want that to... Um, keep me up at night so I go down on my knees and I repent. All of that is the kindness of God to draw us back to His heart through repentance. So I would love to know, how. To, what does that look like? Like you went to Lisa. Yeah. Like what does that look like in your real life? We discovered the joy of repentance, mm. not the task yes. of repentance, but That's the joy so yeah. of repentance. Yeah. And, and I, I can tell when I need to, and it's when I react rather than respond to a situation. Mm -hmm. And when I react, in a way that's out of proportion, there's history attached. Mm -hmm. So it happened with, you know, wow. Christian wasn't living at home at the time. He's, so we're FaceTiming one night and he's, you know, training to be a clinical psychologist and he's got on his beanie and I don't know what else. And he's got tattoos all up his arms. And, and I think he just looks adorable. But my husband, Barry says, Christian, you know what, babe, now that you're moving further, you know, you're soon going to be seeing clients. You're probably going to need to, you know, look a little more. I think his hair was pink at the time. You're probably going to maybe need to look a little more professional. And Christian said, Dad, I really don't want to be that kind of a therapist. I want to just be real. I want to sit opposite people. I want to be, and, and Barry said, yeah, I get that. But I, and so they kept going with this discussion and something in me reacted in a way that was out of proportion to what they were dealing with. And, and I kind of snapped at Barry on the phone. I'm like, why do you always do that? You know, you think this is going to help me? And I got really mad. And so Christian was like, hey, guys, I've still got a lot of homework to do. So <laughs> this has been a blast, up. but, yeah. you know, and he, so he signs off. And then Barry said to me, do you want to talk? And I'm like, no. <laughs> and so he went upstairs to the bedroom and I sat there and I'm, and this is just like a year ago. And I'm like, Lord, what is wrong with me? I mean, I was genuinely wow. angry, yeah. not just mm -hmm. like, oh, come on, that's, he looks great. I was angry. Mm -hmm. And I had this vision of myself yeah. um, as a little girl mm -hmm. um, because my mom, once my father had died by suicide, we lived in very limited yeah. budget. And so we would get clothes from the church and we would get, you know, free school uniforms and free school meals. And we were the poor kids in school. Mm -hmm. And I remember the feeling of somebody pointing out something I was wearing and mm. saying, you know, my sister had that years ago, or that looks more like a nightgown. Or, and, and there's just this horrible sense of yeah. shame that I felt. And I realized that what I'd reacted to was yeah. nothing to do with what was going on yes, with them. Yeah. Yeah. And so I immediately mm. fell on my knees in our den and I'm like, Lord, mm. please forgive me. Yeah. And it was just like, I never feel more fully human than when I repent. Yeah. 
Mm. It sounds weird, but it's like this glorious invitation into saying, that was ugly and it was horrible and it was coming from this place, had nothing to do with them. And there was just this peace that flooded over me. And so, you know, I'm upstairs and I asked Barry to forgive me, which, you know, he very graciously did, Mm. called Christian back. We'd learned as a family to sit down and say, this was me and this was what that was about and this was nothing to do with you. But I have to tell you, in terms of character building, Mm. because, you know, when you're on television or you're on platforms or you write books, you can look pretty good. But it's when you're in your home with your family and you're, that suddenly all the un, all the, pieces that are still broken yeah. that come to the surface. But I am so grateful yeah. for the joy of repentance yeah. because it also means you get to let it go. Yeah. You don't beat yourself yeah. up for three more days thinking, yeah. I'm a terrible wife and I'm a yeah. terrible mother. Yeah. 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 It's just this beautiful yeah. gift. Because yeah. it's already been dealt with on the cross. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Jesus has already taken care of exactly. it. Yeah. Paid in full. Yeah, paid yeah. in full. We find lasting freedom in confession and repentance because repentance actually is a great coming back together. I think we have the wrong idea about repentance. We think that it is this overbearing, uh, weighty, and it is it is weighty in a sense. We think of it in this very condemning sense. But it, it it's beautiful. It, it is actually the, the reconnection. It is the way that we come back to God when we've sinned. And so it, it's, it's about the beautiful relationship we have with the Lord. The freedom piece is as we have come out of God's will, as we have sinned, as we have messed up, and in many cases hurt ourselves, We come back to our Father and we say, God, here I am, here's what I've done, which by the way, He already knows. And in humility, I'm coming to you and saying, help me, and I love you, I accept uh, that I need you, which is such an important piece, and can we come back together? And the way back is that confession and repentance piece. And I'll tell you, there's nothing like it. It sets you free, literally like nothing else.